Um, hi, my name is Ashley. Um, I'm an emerging artist. Uh, I like to paint fantastical stories from my imagination, childhood, and the world around me. Um, aside from that, I am an art, arts instructor, um, and I help teach ESL students art fundamentals. Um, and today I decided uh, we're going to paint a winter wonderland to get into the holiday spirit. Um, and it's a beginner friendly painting, so don't worry. Um, just try your best and have fun with it. I'll show you different uh, painting techniques. Um, we'll try impasto as well as a little bit of splatter. Um, and I thought it would be nice since it's a small group if we could just introduce ourselves uh, since it's just the three of us today. Uh, so Susan, do you wanna go first? <laughs> sure, so my name is Susan McIntyre. I live in Kelowna, British Columbia, and I have been oil painting for about um, six months now. Oh, that's amazing. Do you discover it with like the pandemic? Yes, yes. I, well, I took a course last year and we, and we painted one painting. Uh, and then I decided to do some more work this year because what else are we doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Anna, do you want to go next? You guys are muted. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you don't feel comfortable putting your video on, that's totally okay. Yeah, actually, Ashley, if you could remind people as they come in to see you on our behalf, if you could just mm -hmm. remind them of that one little tidbit of info, because some people are or are not. Um, and I, I don't want to kind of keep jumping in on your workshop, okay? Yeah. Um, hi, Zwadi and Stacey. So um, we are recording. Uh, this workshop and it'll be accessible to you after. So if you're not comfortable showing your face, that's totally fine. You can keep your video off. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the workshop, you can feel free to um, unmute yourself or uh, tell me in the chat. Okay. Um, hi, David. Um, hi, David. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we're going to get started. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to put them in the chat um, or unmute yourself. Uh, we are recording this and it, that will be available to you after. So in case you want to, you haven't finished any work during the workshop, you can go ahead and finish that afterwards. Um, so for the sake of time, I think we'll get started with the painting then. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start off with a base layer. So I'm just taking the blue paint and I'm going to put it all over our canvas. And I'm going to show you our reference pick for today. So this is our inspiration. So um, I thought because of the holidays, uh, it would be nice to paint like a winter wonderland. Um, so this will be our inspiration for today. So what we'll do is we'll get started with um, using our blue paint and just putting this all over the canvas. So I'm using palette paper, but you can use um, a paper plate. Um, anything that you have at home that works well as a palette is fine. So the first step is just having our base layer. And we're gonna put this all over the canvas. And while we're doing this, I think we can finish with our introductions. Um, so, uh, Anna, do you want to go next? You can just unmute yourself and um, introduce yourself. If not, you can also type in the chat, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, my name is Anna. Uh, I am a grade eight student. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently doing virtual school, so that, that's been fun. Uh, yeah, I enjoy doing art. I uh, like to do 
the arts. So like um, music and art, painting. So this is a great workshop for me. Thank you so much for offering it. Well, it's really great to hear that. And I'm so glad that you're joined. And uh, um, that's really cool that you do different types of art, like music as well. Because I feel like they're all um, blend into each other. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you, Anna. Um, David, do you want to go next? Uh, you can just introduce yourself. If not, that's okay. So we're just starting off by doing our base layer in the blue paint. Um, Jess, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, um, I'm Jess. I'm from the UK, um, from Liverpool. And, um, I'm in uni at the moment studying fine art. I really love doing art, um, especially like painting. So, yeah. Oh, it's so nice to have you join and it's probably stressful with finals, right? Sorry, what was that? It's probably stressful with finals. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. So painting is like a good way to relax. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining and that's really cool that you're all the way from the UK. <laughs> um, Zwadi, do you want to introduce yourself next? Um, if not, that's okay. But if you feel uh, comfortable, feel free to unmute yourself and introduce. So you're just gonna use your blue paint, um, whatever color that you have and uh, prep the entire canvas with this. So we're gonna work on top and it's gonna create a lot of dimension. And don't worry if it's not perfect um, because this is just our base layer. My blue is a lot lighter, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, whatever blue you have at hand is fine. Oh, and Stacy, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, um, I'm not an artist, uh, I'm an accountant. Um, but I just wanted to learn a few things because I do like painting, but um, I didn't really know like how to get started. Oh, thank you for joining. No problem. And if anyone um, throughout the workshop, you have any questions or you want me to look at, at your painting so far, but just feel free to unmute yourself and let me know. So the blue in our reference picture is uh, much different from the one I'm using, uh, but that's okay because we're just using this as inspiration. Hi, 
How is everyone doing with priming their canvas so far? Is anyone finished? Yes, I'm finished. Oh, wow, you're fast, Susan. Okay. I'm using a small canvas. Oh, OK. I'm just going to do one more layer. And we'll just give that a few seconds to dry. The good thing about acrylic is it dries really fast and it's great for layering. Um, so if when everyone's done, if you can just put a thumbs up, uh, that would be great using the, your reactions or just unmute yourself and let me know that you're done. So I'll just wait um, a few more minutes and I'll also let the, the paint dry. Is everyone doing okay so far? Yeah. Thanks. So next, we're just going to take some white paint. Um, and we're going to work on our base. So looking at the biggest part here, um, I notice is the hills, the snowy hills. So we're going to work on this next. And I'm taking a smaller brush this time. I'm mixing it into the paint. And I'm just going to map out where these hills are. So it's about, um, I would say, around here on the side. It's not halfway, but about um, a little less than half. And I'm going very lightly here because this is going to be our, our guideline. And then I see that there's another hill over here. And it kind of goes in the shape of an S. So right down the middle and then across all the way down here. So these are just our guidelines. And I'm going very lightly. So then I'm going to work on this line. Um, if we see our reference picture, this line is a little bit of a curve and it, it slopes down, connecting to um, our curve over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and try my best to create that line. Don't worry if it's not perfect, because this is just our map. And then I'm going to work on the big hill right here, which again, it's not half, it's about halfway. And it connects to this line. So I'm going to start here, about halfway through the canvas, and then go all the way down to this line. And what we're doing is we're just creating a guideline for us. So next, I'm going to try to reinforce these lines, working um, 
from light to dark. So it's most light over here. And I'm just going to fill it in. So filling in this first slope over here. Um, yes, David, uh, this will be accessible afterwards. Um, so you, anything that you don't finish, you can go back and watch the recording to help you. So that's no problem. Um, and if you're working with oil painting, uh, you can also try this with oil paint. That will work well. So all I'm doing right now um, is filling in, working from light to dark, our slopey hills, following our guidelines that we've created. So the first one just goes around here. And I'm just using the white paint. Yeah, no problem. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put in the chat or just unmute yourself and let me know if I'm going too fast. So now um, I'm going to work on this next part here of the hill. All I'm doing is reinforcing the outline that we've created. So it kind of goes um, in a slant. How is everyone doing so far? Are you okay with the outline? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just let me know if you have any questions. It's a little harder in um, oil paints because the base is wet. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that. I wanted to do acrylics because it dries really fast, so it's easy to work on top. You may, may not be able to do the same techniques as everything. Um, but try to work in thin layers, uh, that will help you with the layering. So all I'm doing again is reinforcing our outline of our hills. So I'm filling in this white area now. Um, and we'll create the dimension after. It's all acrylics are all about layering. So we can always fix the tones, but it's good to work from light to dark.
And I'm leaving a little bit of blue here just because um, if you look at the picture, uh, our reference, you can see that um, the contour of the hill um, is in that blue. So don't worry about it not being perfect. Um, this is just, we're building on top, so layers by layers. And now I'm just doing the last tail here, which is the biggest one. And it is the brightest white. So I'm gonna keep the opacity quite thick in this one. And now I'm just kind of filling in this hill over here, this middle section to connect it. How's everyone doing so far? Am I moving too fast or is everyone doing okay? For, um, for the hill, how do you do the, the bottom part with the two waves? So are you talking about this part? Yeah. So I'm following uh, the general contour of the hill that I see in the, the reference picture. So if you see the first one, it kind of goes, um, you're just leaving about like a little bit of space here so you can average, right? So that's our, our first line, if you notice. It's just like this slope. Yeah. And then the secondly, I did another line over here following this slope. It's almost in an S shape. Do you see here? Mm -hmm. And then I did another line um, using this big hill over here. Do you see that? Yeah. So I filled in this hill first um, and this one. And then I'm creating this line as well as this one. So the S shape. And then you have your two hills. Uh, does that make sense? Or do you, should, is there a better way I can explain it? I think it would be helpful if you start with your S shape first and then create the two hills over here. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more blue and what we're going to do is create a gradient. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blue into my white. Whatever blue you have ahead, not too much. And I'm going to start creating a gradient in between here.
Um, I'm going to add more blue because it's still quite white. Yeah, and I kind of like the tone of this one. It's almost a mid-tone, and it works well as a transition shape. And what I'm doing is I'm just going over the contours here of the blue that we see in the reference picture. And I'm layering on top of the blue that we have um, in this mid-tone. Again, just reinforcing that outline. And I'm not using fancy paint here, I'm just using um, just Dollarama paint. And there's nothing wrong with this type of paint. The only thing is you don't get a lot of pigment, so you have to use more paint to get that pigment. But that's fine. It's quite thin, but it still works well. So now that I kind of got the mid-tone in, um, I'm noticing I still want a little bit more dimension. So in this hill particularly, it kind of goes from uh, dark here and then it gets lighter up here. So I'm just going to work my way up the hill, blending um, almost in a curved motion. And I'm going to add a little bit of white now to blend that out. Again, in a curved motion to make it look following the form of the object, which is a, it's a curve. And then I'm adding a little bit of blue to the end here as well. Just to make it look a little bit three-dimensional, if it has more values. Um, I also noticed that I didn't uh, quite get this value right here, so I'm going a little bit lighter. And 
now I'm also um, noticing that um, around here, it gets a little bit darker actually, uh, near the ends of the white. So what I'm gonna do is take some more of my blue and create a shade that's one step darker than the shade that I've created. So just by adding more blue. And then again, I'm working in between here. So over the outlines, following the curve. So again, in that S curve first. And then over here as well. And as well as here. And just at the ends. So again, it's like the shape of an S. But try to blend it out. You don't want any harsh lines. I'm just going to go a little bit darker over here. And I also um, want to blend this line in between overall, uh, just to get a good transition. How's everyone doing so far? Do you have any questions? Uh, anyone have any questions or you guys are okay? You can also type in the chat if you're more comfortable with that. The bottom of my painting, it, it doesn't look that, <laughs> that great. Um, um, do you want to, <laughs> thanks Wadi, do you want to show me a picture? No, it's so bad. <laughs> okay, wait, I'll show you. Okay. Don't worry, don't be too critical on yourself, because uh, uh, this is just a tutorial, right? And the more you practice, uh, the better you'll get at painting. So feel free to show me a picture. Um, so I'm also, what I'm noticing is uh, around here, it also gets a little bit lighter again. So I'm just going to add a little bit more white. Just in the center. And then I'm adding blue around it.
Um, Stacey, are you doing okay? Or do you want to show me? Yeah. Oh, I sent you a picture. Did you get? Oh no, I don't see it in the chat. Oh, and that's great, Zoli. I'm really glad that you're having fun. Because this is just meant to be fun and interactive. Uh, Stacey, can you send it again? If you feel comfortable. Um, so I think that's a good start for our mountains. Uh, what I'm also, I also missed one line here. It's right here. I'm just gonna add that right now. So we have our S shape and then we have another two lines. So one is right here, almost. And I'm going to blend it out, just using a little bit of white. And I realized I did not make this hill uh, big enough, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more white over here. Feel free to make adjustments um, as you look at your painting. I'm not adding water um, because I'm using dollar store paint it gets it's already so thin that you don't really need water and i'm just going to add a little bit more blue to this end I know this is not dark enough. And again, just reinforcing some of the areas. I think it needs to be a little bit darker. Um, so I think that's a good start. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna work on this area next. Uh, and for this one, um, we're gonna create a mid-tone again, but something a bit distinct from the other ones. So what I'm gonna do is add black actually. So I'll take some blue and add just a tiny bit of black. Again, my blue is a lot different from the one in the picture, but that's okay. Uh, whatever blue you have at hand is fine. So the color I'm mixing now is almost a gray tone, um, but it's, it's deeper in value and that's what I want. And just like we did with these slopes, we're gonna create a map for ourselves. So I'll put the video down here. Uh, we're just gonna generally map out where we think that these hills are. So there's about one curve here. And then another one here. 
and then just averaging there's about something like that just do a general guideline for yourself So I'm just doing a really rough outline. Um, and this is just gonna help us uh, with mapping out where, where we're gonna paint. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna look at our reference image and see where this dark area of value is. I'm going to roughly sketch that in. So I see uh, there's a dark value right here. And I'm just going in a curved motion, kind of mapping that in. My colors are a lot different, but that's okay. It's still a step deeper in value, which is what I want. So go a step deeper in value from what you have. And then I see one over here, roughly. And then there's just one in between here. Uh, does anyone want to show me their painting so far? Or is everyone doing okay? Feel free to share if you have any questions or concerns. Is that like a black or a dark blue? Um, it's a it's a dark blue. I added a little bit of black to my blue, so it's almost like a navy blue. You don't have to use the exact same colors; just you want to have a, a deeper value, so that's why I add a little bit of black. And looking at our reference picture, um, I'm just looking to see um, where this dark blue is and mapping that in roughly. And I think that's good enough. Um, it's just to get a deeper value in there. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna mix blue and white again, creating a mid-tone almost like this one that we use for our hills. And I'm gonna work on these areas in between the shadow. All we're doing right now is really just mapping out color and then we're gonna layer on top. So we're working from um, simply breaking down our composition into shapes and then we work on details after.
So I'm kind of looking at these lighter areas here now, and that's what I'm um, putting in. But I'm putting it in just a general value for that, which is the same value as this. Don't worry about things being um, not perfect, right? Um, every painting is going to be different. We're just using this as a source of inspiration, but right now you just really want to map out um, where you believe these mountains will be, right? And we're working with different values. So we worked with this dark shade here. And uh, now we're going a step up, similar to the shade, and mapping in those areas. So what I'm going to do now is add more blue. And then go in between these two colors to blend them in. So just in between the two colors. And it's just gonna help create a nice gradient. And I'm going in a curved motion again because you want to follow the form um, of whatever your subject matter is. In this case, it toes. And um, that's very curved, right? So that's why my motion is very curved when I'm painting. So I think that's a good start for now. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is work at the back here, creating these smaller mountains. And I'm gonna add more white to my blue to create a different value. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
And again, just like we did with these two forms, we're just going to create a general guideline for ourselves to map out the mountain. Uh, this doesn't have to be perfect, just try your best to replicate it. So I'm going to start um, right here. Kind of see one, one area right here. You don't want to be perfect with mountains because if you notice, they're, the lines are very jagged. And we want to try to replicate that. And I'm going to move to a smaller brush because it'll give me a little bit more precision. I'm also just going to fill in the area as well. Because we're going to work on top, so this will make a good um, base for us. And again, uh, the value is not exact. As long as it's distinct from the other ones, then you're fine. Um, how is everyone doing so far? Anybody have any questions? Okay, thanks. Yeah, let me know if uh, you need any help. So I'm just roughly sketching in the mountains. Um, they're almost like jagged lines, so don't worry about being perfect. Just try your best. And it's this one over here that we're doing. My value is a little too um, light, so I'm adding more blue. And then I'm going to add more blue again, kind of working over top of this darker shade, uh, just so it can blend in between.
and I'm fixing my mountains. So now I'm going to work on this area, uh, which is a lot lighter. So I'm adding more white now. And I'm just going in between uh, around the mountains that I've already created to roughly sketch that in. I try to keep your, li your lines jagged because uh, the mountains itself are not perfect. There's also a lighter area right here, so I'm just going to add that. And then work my way across. Okay, no problem. No problem, David. Yeah, just wait for it to dry. Um, if you're using acrylic, it should dry really fast, though. And then just work on your mountains. So um, break it down into the S shape and then create these two slopes. Uh, and then work on your mountains. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm also noticing uh, this light area here. So I'm going to add that in because this, the value is very similar to what I already have. And again, my uh, stroke is not perfect. I'm, it's very jagged because uh, that's how the mountains Look, right? So you don't need a perfect brush stroke. Just move your uh, brush back and forth slightly and you'll get those jagged lines. And now wherever I see um, these white areas, I'm going to try my best to um, map them in. So any of these white areas over here, the bigger ones. And it's very easy to create that. Uh, you just kind of dab your brush with a little bit of white paint. So going in that dabbing motion will give you that kind of textured effect.
So now I kind of got those big areas in. Um, I'm going to work on creating this type of texture. And how you're going to do that is just take a little bit of white paint and you're just going to dab. So like this, in this motion, and it will create that texture. So very lightly, just dab. And don't don't worry about being precious with it. Just kind of move in that direction in the stabbing motion, and it'll give you that texture. Um, does anyone want to show their painting so far? Or anyone have any questions? Is everyone doing okay? Okay, just let me know. So all I'm doing is creating uh, this texture here uh, using just a very fine brush and then moving in a dabbing motion slightly with a little bit of white paint. So like this. You don't want to put too much paint on your brush because uh, you want you, you want to make the imprint. And no problem. Go at your own pace. So um, feel free to take breaks if you need to. I'm concentrating more paint at the top because if you notice, um, there's a white area around here and then it kind of, the stroke, they're, they're less concentrated. So try to concentrate more paint up here and then less down here. Make it your strokes like wider apart. And then I'm going to finish off with this one. And nothing's perfect. 
but we're gonna uh, do a technique on top after that will create more texture. So I'm just uh, looking for which areas uh, I should reinforce because I'm losing some of my form here. So I'm going over those lighter areas. Yes, that, that'll be great. Of course, you can watch it again and uh, go at your own pace. So I think it, this is a good guideline for our mountains now, but now let's uh, do something fun. So you're gonna take your brush. Um, I'm gonna move to a very small brush because this works well with smaller brushes. So I'm using one that looks like this. It's very, very thin. And what you're going to do is you're going to dip your paintbrush into water and take a little bit of white paint. And again, mix some more water back in again. You don't want to have too much on your brush. I have about this much paint on my brush. You can hardly see because it, it's very watery. And what you're going to do is you're just going to flick your brush on top of the mountains. And it's going to add even more texture. I'm going to a little bit more white paint because I had too much water on this one. But what you're going to do is you're just going to flick very lightly over top of your canvas. And you could go fast, you can go slow. Uh, but what is this going to, what's this going to do is just going to add a little bit more texture on top of our mountains. I'm adding some more white paint because I don't have quite enough. This can be a little bit messy, so be careful. I don't like this brush um, for this technique, so I'm gonna move to a different one. One that works well is a fan brush. So um, something like this works really well for this. And I'm just gonna wet my brush a little bit and then go into that white paint and then just flick. I really like this technique. It's really fun and um, it creates a cool texture on top of your work. So I'm literally just tapping on top of my brush. Uh, but be careful because this can get very messy.
And it's just gonna add a little bit of texture on top of our mountains. So if you want more concentration, um, stay in one area and, and keep continue tapping that area so you'll get more paint applied. But if you want to disperse, then you go around. So keep doing that until you think you have enough. Um, it almost creates like a snow-like effect on top of our mountains. I'm going to go in a little bit more over here. Again, I'm just tapping my brush. And it creates little splatters that almost look like snow. Keep going all over your page until you think you have enough. Um, I also think it would look nice um, in our hills down here, so I'm going to add a little bit of that. Um, what do you guys think of this uh, technique? Do you like it? Are you guys doing okay so far? I like it. Yeah, it's really fun, isn't it? So I'm just going across the page, uh, concentrating a little bit down into our mountains down here. Um, so what we're going to do, and then I'm just kind of reinforcing some of the areas that have more snow, so up here and around here. I also noticed that uh, the clouds here, I have a little bit of pink, uh, like a pink tint to them. So we're going to add a little bit of red to our white um, and start working on the clouds. Uh, just a little bit of red. You don't need that much. And um, go with a very light hand when you're mapping the clouds. And I like to move in a circular motion when I'm doing clouds. So 
So I'm starting from the right of my page and then going across. I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to thin out the paint. And again, this uh, reference picture is just our, um, is only our inspiration, right? So we're not following it exactly. So don't worry about things being perfect. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, blue into the red and white, just to create a purple tint for the clouds. And I'm moving across my page. Um, I'm working on this big cloud right now. That's kind of almost a line. And I'm gonna take some water to blend it out. And I'm gonna continue creating these clouds. I'm going to have a lot of water in my brush because the clouds are very thin. I don't want the want it to be very opaque. Because things that look far, farther in distance, um, they have less detail and uh, they're also a little bit more muddier. So I'm adding more water just to blend uh, in between them because I don't want it to look like it was like pasted on. I want everything to be blended in. Um, and now I'm going to work on this dark cloud and just filling this in by adding more blue. I almost created like a navy blue.
Again, you want to keep the paint pretty thin so everything blends in with one another. And then I'm creating these small clouds across. So now I'm adding more white to my blue because I'm going to fill in this area. It's very light and I have it very dark. So I want to correct that. Um, and then I'm going to go in a little bit with my darker blue, just to add some more dimension in between here. And I'm going in again with more white um, and a little bit of red uh, just to create some lighter clouds. You almost get a purple tint. I'm going to add a little bit more blue because I want to reinforce uh, this darker cloud up here. And if I mix a little bit of black, I can get a deeper tone. And I'm just going to blend that out. Uh, so I think now we can start working on the trees. So uh, we're going to do this in an impasto technique. Um, but first, I want you to take some of that navy blue you made before by just mixing your blue with a little bit of black. Um, and we're kind of create uh, just lines for something to work on top of, almost like the, um, the leaves. 
like these areas in between the snow, which are the leaves of the tree. So when you're doing spruce trees, um, you kind of want to go in a V motion like this. So you're going to move in a V motion, going almost like in a squiggle, because they're kind of like squiggly lines, but in a V motion. So I'm starting with the tree on the right side first. Now this doesn't have to be perfect, but move in a V motion. And I'm doing this in the navy blue because we're going to work white on top of it and it'll create more de um, depth. So I have two down and then I'm working on this one over here. Uh, no problem, Susan. Thank you for um, joining. I really appreciate it. And yeah, feel free to watch after, because it's hard with oil paint, I know. So I'm just fig fixing the rest of my trees here. Again, going in that V motion. So then this one is almost like a curve connecting. So I'm just going to draw a line for that. We're going to work white on top, so don't worry about it. And then um, I'm going to continue with the V motion for the rest of them. Working with the larger trees first, and then the smaller ones after. So now I'm making my stroke a lot smaller because of, to fill in these smaller trees. I'm also going to change my brush to fine brush and uh, give me more precision. And again, I'm working in almost that navy blue. So keep the V motion. Um, this will give you a lot of that.
So right now I'm working on the small trees here, uh, keeping that V motion um, in my stroke to help me get these lines. But I'm also moving in like a squiggly motion. Um, so it's not a perfect V because I still want to get almost that wave uh, for each leaf. I'm going to work on the bigger tree now. Um, it kind of is tilted. So this navy blue will create a lot of depth when we create when we use the white on top. So that's why it's nice to have that. And then I'm going to work on this bigger tree. It's also kind of tilted to the left. Uh, there's also a tree back here, so I'm going to do my best to map that in. And then there's one over here. So again, I'm keeping the V motion and just mapping it in. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Are you guys doing okay? Just let me know if you have any concerns. Or you like to share your work so far? I'd love to see it. So I'm just going to finish off um, mapping out my trees. And I'm keeping that V motion, uh, but my lines are very squiggly to kind of replicate those leaves. I'm going to add uh, more lines around here because there's a lot more concentration of trees. And then I'm just going to add, um, go in a dot motion, just because you, there's so many, you, can, you can't really see it. It almost looks like dots. And then I'm finally going to add um, leaves onto this tree over here. That's on a slope. 
So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our white paint and layer on top. But we're gonna use an impasto technique, so you wanna have a lot of paint on your brush. Um, so something like this, you want a lot of paint on your brush. That's almost dangling off. And it's almost gonna look like snow. And we're gonna add that to um, the areas. So I'm gonna working on this one first because it has a lot, a lot of snow on it. And I'm following the black lines that I've created. Sorry, the navy blue line in that impasto technique. So you can kind of swirl your brush into the white paint and this will help. And again, I'm sticking with that V motion. So um, the tree stays in that V shape. And then I'm creating the one that's almost on a slope right here. Again, using that impasto technique, so I have a lot of paint on my brush, and it's gonna create more texture. You can kind of swirl your brush into the paint to get enough, and to get the right consistency. And then just add it onto the trees in that V motion. So I'm working on the ones that are closest to us right now. Like these ones, they look like they have a lot of snow on them. So I want those to have the most texture, as well as this one. And then these less texture just because they're behind. Um, how is everyone doing uh, doing so far? Does anyone have any questions? So we'll continue with the trees. Okay. And thanks, Stacy. If you guys want to share as well. Uh, feel free to do so, but we'll do that at the end. Yeah, so there will be a recording available after, uh, and that will help you if you want to finish. Uh, don't worry if your painting's unfinished just now. Uh, go at your own pace. Um, so we're going to finish off. Um, adding the texture to these ones that are closest to us. I'm going to start working on this big tree over here, starting from the top. Uh, using that impasto style again and going in a V motion.
So I'm realizing I need more paint, so I'm gonna add more white paint. Um, because you're gonna use a lot for this technique. And it's gonna help create texture almost like snow. And again, keep that V motion when you're applying the paint. And now I'm going to start thinning down the paint in between uh, just to create some variety in the trees. but I'm still maintaining the V motion. If you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know. I'm just working on some of these smaller trees here. I'm making my lines very thin because these trees are very concentrated and they look a lot smaller, so that will create a sense of depth. If I have thinner brush strokes, as well as lighter strokes. And then I'm going to dab my brush to add a little bit more texture uh, for some of the trees. Okay, I'm going to work um, on my right side now, starting from this one over here. I'm in a very heavy and pastel style again. So thick application of paint. and keeping that V motion. I'm just going to add more paint. So working from the right side, keeping the V motion and thick application of paint.
And now I'm going to work more on my left side because there's a lot more trees on the left side of this composition. I'm continuing with that impasto style, but now working on these larger trees up here. I'm staying in that V motion. Uh, the impasto technique um, gives you that snowy feel. And, that, and since we have that navy blue underneath, it creates more dimension. So I'm going to finish off the rest of the trees here. This one's almost on a slant. And I'm maintaining the V motion. There's one tree at the edge um, where you can only see half of it. So it's just about a half V, but still keep your, your brush stroke squiggly to kind of replicate those leaves. Uh, I'm gonna add more paint to my palette um, just because I wanna create more dimension in between here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move in a dotting motion, starting from the, the front and then going back in between the trees. This will just help show that uh, there's lots of trees concentrated in this area without having to do a lot of detail and work. So I'm just taking my white paint and going in a dotted motion in between here. And I'm going to do the same thing behind these trees. Just a little bit. Just going in a dotting motion. And I'm going to reinforce some of the impasto. Um, now I'm going to work on this area over here, uh, these two sloping trees. 
Same in that pastel technique, but first starting off with that navy blue, just so we have a base to work on top of. So all I'm gonna do, since it's a curved line, um, is create two curved lines here. Don't worry about them being perfect, these are just guidelines. And then I'm going to use impasto on top with that white. And you can just do blobs of paint for this area. Because uh, it's not in that V motion, it's really just a curved line but use a lot of white paint um, to stay with that impasto technique. And I'm going to work on this area now uh, because this tree in the reference picture is a lot lower and mine is still quite high. So I want to keep adding more leaves to it and branches, just working in the V shape again with that impasto technique. Kind of slopes down over there and stops. So I'm adding more leaves to this tree and then a little bit down here I also want to add a little bit more over here just to make the trees look a little bit more full. How's everyone doing so far? Is everyone okay? Um, Zwadi and David, are you guys okay? Stacy? Just let me know if you have any questions. Um, so now I'm going to reinforce some of the snow on the hills. Um, in that impasto technique, I think I'll add a little bit more dimension to what we have so far. So I'm going on top of this mountain. And then a little bit more here. As well as behind here. I also want to reinforce some of these areas um, with impasto. I think it'll create a, a nice texture. So just using um, the reference photo, I'm just going to map in some of the areas. And I think that's good so far. So I also just want to lighten up some of the lines that we've created here in the beginning. So that S shape. So I'm just adding a little bit more white to make it brighter.
as well as along here. I just want the mantis to be a little bit lighter. And again, my brush stroke is staying in that curve motion to follow the hills. I'm just lightening, gonna lighten up around here as well. Um, so now I want to go in with a little bit more blue, um, just to reinforce behind the mountains. And also in between here. I think it's a little bit too light. So I'm just adding more blue to the curves that we created in the beginning around the mountains, just to add more depth. And I'm going from the outer corners inwards. I'm also going to go in a dotted motion around these trees here, just to add more dimension. And not too much, just a little bit and near the mountain. And then also around here, closer to the mountain. And then I'm going to go back in with my navy blue. So I'm mixing in a little bit of black uh, just to reinforce the shadow around here behind the trees. And all I'm doing is laying color in between these trees with that navy blue. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fix this tree over here uh, because I notice it goes down. So I'm just going to move in a swiggly motion underneath that white. And that will create a little bit more dimension. And 
And now I also um, really want to create more uh, emphasis on these trees over here. So I'm gonna move just in a dotting motion around the mountains to create that snow-like effect, just in a dotting motion with a very fine brush. And I'm starting at the top of the mountain where the concentration is higher and then kind of dispersing as I go lower to make the dots look further apart and lighter as well. So continue moving in that dotted motion. Is everyone doing okay so far? Uh, does anyone have any questions? Or would like to show me their work so far? I feel free to type in the chat as well if you, or unmute yourself, whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, thanks, Stacey. Uh, that's no problem if uh, you uh, you don't want to paint anymore as well. Feel free to take a break and then come back to it. But all we're doing now is just moving in that dotted motion on the mountains. And it's going to create an, an additional layer of texture. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go in with more blue just to add more emphasis um, on these shadows here. We'll create more depth in our landscape. So I'm adding the blue with just a little bit of black again. And then I'm going to reinforce these areas. Also around here, just to add a little bit more dimension. And I'm gonna work behind the trees in this area. Uh, 
Um, and I also noticed that there's a shadow here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to create that um, using that navy blue. So you can add a little bit of water to your brush if you feel like your paint is dry. Because acrylic tends to dry really fast. And then all I'm doing is creating lines to kind of replicate that shadow. Uh, there are curve lines, so go in a curved motion when you're creating them. And now looking at the composition, I feel like we could spend more time on the sky. So I'm going to go in more with the blue um, on my big brush. And add a thicker application of paint on the left side and then thin as we go to the right side. Um, as well as I noticed that um, our sky doesn't have as much dimension. So I want to add um, this more of this white pinky shade. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of red into our white again. And then add some blue so it turns into a purple tint. And we're going to go back and work on some of our clouds that we've created in the beginning. So this is your time now to correct any areas that you feel um, you could work a little bit more on. So I'm going in back and kind of reinforcing that dark cloud in the sky because I didn't make mine quite dark enough. And all I did to make this navy blue was just add a little bit of black into that blue. And I'm just reinforcing some of the areas that we've done in the beginning. But this will add a little bit more dimension to our landscape. Um, and I also want to work on this right here, this mountain behind. So what I'm going to do is add more blue and just a little bit of white. And I'm going to go in between this area here to create some of those mountains. Again, doing very jagged lines because mountains are not perfect lines. 
Uh, they're very jagged and you don't need to worry about proportion. Just move it um, in that motion, doing your best to, to replicate what you see. Uh, that's no problem, uh, David. Just try your best with the techniques. So um, the impasto style uh, is really nice because you don't need to be too precious with it. You just do a thick application of paint for the trees. Um, and work from thin to thick, right? So that's why we, we did, we broke down the composition into bigger forms, right? Starting with these hills, then moving into this area in the sky. And then we did the trees last. So details come last. Um, and now is the time we're just kind of fixing any areas we think we could refine or spend more time on. But you'll get better with practice and um, it's great that you're, you're working with oils because that's a hard one to do. Oils are different from acrylics because uh, you need, they're not water-based so you can't mix them with water. You can only use paint thinners such as linseed oil or um, turpentine, right? Uh, but the good thing about oils is that you can work with them for a long period of time. You can work on a painting for months, perhaps, but with acrylics, it dries instantly. So that's why um, I'm doing that today. So again, I'm just kind of correcting some of the areas that I feel could be refined, which for me is the mountains and the sky. And then I'm going in back with the navy blue just to add more dimension. Because the more values you have, the more um, dimension and three-dimensionality you can create. And value is just lightness to darkness. So I'm just working uh, again on my mountains because they could be refined. And I'm adding a little bit more blue in between the mountains, just to add more depth again, as well as the trees. Since we only used about two colors for this painting, um, mostly, um, I want to use as many values as I can. And I'm going to go in uh, with white a little bit more in this area. Again, working in a pastel technique. So thick application of paint. And I see that there's another uh, tree over here, so I'm just going to add that in. Um, and we're almost done. Um, I do feel that this side is not 
not light enough, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more white on the side. Just at the very top of the mountain. And then I think lastly, just correcting this area as well. I'm gonna wash off my brush and add a little bit more blue into the sky. So around here. Again, using jagged lines to create the, the mountain shape. And then working on the sky a little bit more. How are you guys doing so far? Um, do you have any questions? Even if not about this painting, but about painting in general that you like to ask, uh, feel free to do so. And uh, I think that's enough uh, for this. I could go a little bit more with the clouds. So I'll add a little bit more pink. Um, so that technique is, um, is just spotter and experimentation. So there's different techniques you can try with the paintbrush. Um, and I, I really like playing with different textures with paint. So um, that's one of them, as well as impasto, which is just thick, heavy application of paint, instead of watering it down. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is work from thin to thick when you're painting and build up the textures and layers. Uh, this will help you with just your overall technique. Um, so how is everyone doing so far? Do you guys wanna share? Uh, that would be great. Um, Zwadi, how are you doing? Um, David, you mentioned you use oils. How long have you been painting for? Um, feel free to type in the chat or um, I'd love to see some of your work so far. But I think that's it for now. Um, I'm going to let the paint dry a little bit more and then I fix some fine details. Um, just I'm looking at my reference photo and then comparing it to my painting, just to see what areas I can fine tune. Um, it's not exactly the same again because I only use two colors for my composition. Yeah, so I think this is good for now, um, but feel free uh, to watch the recording again if you want to follow step by step. Um, and always
always just take the, the next steps to refine your work afterwards, right? Nothing has to be perfect. It's all practice. Um, it's going to help you get to where you want to be.